Welcome back. So in this tutorial, we're going to put some dimensions on a model and print it. So it's great that we've got this model, but it doesn't do us much good if we can't make plans out of it and actually build the thing. So that's what we will be doing here. Uh, this is a hanging wall cupboard. This was in the autumn issue of Woodworking Magazines. Uh, mine's modified a little bit. I don't have the molding on mine yet, and I don't have the glass in the door. I just have a big raised panel, but that's the idea. So here's where we are. So here's my model. Here's the outliner with all my groups. Uh, I've got a little hanging cleat here on the back. So I'm going to hang it. And a little recess here to hide it so this sits flush against the wall. So there's one really simple tool here that we haven't looked at yet. It's tools, dimensions. Kind of like the tape measure, but this one actually keeps a dimension on the screen. And I'll draw it for you. So there's 30 inches, and if we come across here, about 18 inches. And it's a little weird because the dimensions actually exist in 3D, so if we rotate around, you get on there, so you get a little line. So there's some ways we can make, we can help us, help display those dimensions a little easier in more like traditional plans. You know, we could try to come to the front here and try to line it up. But you can see we're not perfectly square, so this has like some... This is called aliasing. And you see these weird stacked, looks like little stair steps. Because you're not quite perfectly looking at it. It's straight on. It's tilted a little bit. But there's a couple tricks we can do here. The first is going to be perspective. If you notice, I'm going to delete these dimensions here. In the real world, when you're looking at something, everything converges towards the horizon. We can get a sample here if we add a couple guidelines. Oops. You see how these guides kind of go out towards infinity and meet at the horizon. So even though we know this top and bottom are parallel to each other, when we look at it with our eye, you know, this one angles down, this one angles up. There's a view we can do in here. If we go to camera, parallel projection, gets rid of that convergence. So parallel lines always remain parallel. This one slopes up, this one slopes up. And this is kind of what you see in traditional exploded view plans. You see this isometric view, they call it. I've heard also heard it called like three quarters view, where you're kind of off to the side, up, and around the corner from the front, looking at it at an angle like this, where all these lines remain parallel. So when you see a, when you see a diagram in a magazine or in a book showing you dimensions and something on an object, this is this parallel projection is sort of the view that they use. But doing this gives us some standard views that we won't get that aliasing. So if we go standard camera, standard views, front, we see it perfectly straight on. We can go camera, standard views, we can go top. See the top there. So this is perfect views here for making our plans. And there's a quicker way to get to this than to keep going up to camera and standard views. What we can do is if you right click on this toolbar, and say customize. That'll let you remove things from here. The interface might be a little bit different in Windows, but it's the same idea here. So we don't need these. This is for importing and exporting models. We're not going to worry about that right now. This is importing and exporting into Google Maps. This is terrain. So if you're drawing something in Google, Google Earth, I should say, you can set the slope of the land. So we're not going to worry about that. But we do want these standard views. So we'll put these up here. So now we'll have quick access to our views without having to go up to that camera. Drop down every time. So if we go here, here's the front, and the top, and left and right, there's the back, and they even give us that little isometric view, quick access to it. This happens to be looking at the back, so it doesn't really do us as much good, so we'd want to rotate around to the front there. But Okay, so let's make up some dimensions here. So we're going to go to the front view, we'll zoom in a little bit, and we'll go make our dimensions, and these are going to kind of be overall dimensions. So there's the front. And the way you draw these is you click once, start point, once for your end point, and then when you move the mouse, it does the, the distance away from your model. Click again to set that. And once you have one, when you roll over, it turns blue, you can click again, and now you can move it if you need to uh, realign it there. Dimensions tool is a little finicky. You can, real, you can only start a dimension at a in an intersection, so I can't start, I can start in an intersection or a midpoint, but I can't start like anywhere I want. So I can't come over here and say, oh, I want a dimension from here to here. 
and you can't stop anywhere either. So we can start here, but I can't stop here. If I click, it doesn't it doesn't keep it until you're on an endpoint. Once you get to your little purple square there, then you can click and stop. All right. So there's dimensions for the front. And let's come and do some dimensions for the side. Now you notice this little thin line right here. So like I was saying before, since those dimensions actually exist in 3D, you can kind of see the dimension line. So one thing we can do is if we come back to the front. We'll group these. Hold shift here and select them both and we'll group them. And then you can hide this group. And you'll see it shows up in over here in our outliner. If you want, you can give it a name, keep track of it. So I'll kind of do dimensions for each view and then hide them so they don't kind of get in the way of each other. Let's come over here to the side. And we'll do our dimensions. Come over here and come down. Now let's say we wanted to do get this face frame in here. We can get it, but you see the dimensions kind of squished in there. You can't really read it. So if you come up here to Window, Entity Info, this gives us a new little panel here we can use. And this shows us properties for anything that's currently selected. So when I click on this dimension, for example, I'm going to click this down arrow to give us a few more options. There's a the text that's displayed, and then it says where it's going to display at text position. So if we say outside end, it'll pop out the outside. Outside start would overlay over this other guy, but in some cases that would be where you actually want it to be. So we're going to go outside end, and our arrows in there are a little squished together, so we can change the arrow type. You can go none, just have a little line, you can have slashes, dots, or an open arrow instead of a closed arrow, but that's probably even worse, so I'll do none for that one. And then rather than have this one up here, if you wanted to, we could delete that. And we can draw one over top of this that shows the full dimension like this. So depending on your style, how you like to see your dimensions drawn. All right, so we'll come and we'll group these and hide them. Let's say we want to go back to the front. And now we'll do just our carcass. So we're going to get rid of the door. We'll hide that. And we'll hide the drawer, and we'll hide the face frame, and we'll hide the back. So there's our carcass. Oh, that's that hanging cleat in there, so we'll hide that too. There we go. So we'll start making some dimensions here. And we'll do, we'll do this top piece here, including the rabbit. So we'll make sure we're here. Over here in this outside corner, come up, and then we'll do the overall dimensions for this side. Like that. And we'll do this, and we'll show the space between these. And you get nice little hints here. You make all your dimensions line up. It wants to snap where the other one is. That's kind of handy. And let's say we wanted to do the thickness of these pieces. That's going to be another one that's going to be kind of hard to see. So we'll do that entity info again and we'll put him outside. And get rid of these arrows. And again, that'll give us a little hint to keep those lined up. And both of these guys will move out. In this case, outside start. So we actually stick it up there and wouldn't look so bad then. Wouldn't be inside anything else like it was previously. And we'll get a little line here for this one. There we go. So now that we've got these dimensions, how are we going to print this? Let's group these like we did with the other ones. And I'm going to actually print these ones so I won't hide these yet. So here's a little, this this is a part of SketchUp. I'm not sure why they haven't figured out a better way to do this yet, but what you have to do is you basically need to guess at the size 
that you're going to be printing this at. You'll see when we go to Document Setup, this, may, this checkbox may or not be checked on for you, but you're going to want to check this off. And you're going to say, okay, a sheet of paper is 8.5 by 11. And you have a little bit of a margin there. You can't print all the way up to 8.5. So I always set the width to 8. So if I printed this right now with a width of 8, the height would only be 3 and 3 quarter inches. So this whole window would take up the width of a piece of paper. But this would only end up being 3 and 3 quarter inches high when I printed it. That's not the right proportion. So we're going to cancel this, and we're going to actually resize this window. Let's try right about there. I'm going to go document setup again. Now it's 8 by 8 and a quarter, so that's getting closer. Let's go a little more. Eight by nine and a half. Get rid of this. A little bit more. Eight by nine seven eight. So that's pretty close. I like to do about eight by ten or so. Get myself some room. So one of these dimensions changed a little bit, so I can just reset this to eight. So eight by ten and sixteen. That looks good. So now if you were to print this. This would fit on a sheet of paper and look really good. Basically full screen, a full page. And you just go file print, set your settings. This, of course, looks different in Windows. Um, but if you can find this option, you, you do want this turned on, vector printing. That'll give you lines that are super crisp, no matter how much you enlarge this thing and try to make it as big as you want. The lines will still be super sharp. Otherwise, they get fuzzy the bigger they are. I'll do it as a PDF here so we can see an example. I'll just go preview. This will actually turn it into a PDF for me. This probably isn't available on Windows, but there are free PDF makers you can find. So you see, that's, that's what it looked like on a sheet of paper. It's perfect. And you notice here, if we zoom in, these lines stay nice and sharp. So there we go. That's how you print. Now, it's going to be kind of annoying to have to constantly, now I'd have to hide these and turn everything back on. Right, and then find which group was the dimensions for the front. So I have to unhide these and then I have to file print again. So we've got a new toolbar we're going to show, or a new panel. This is called the Scenes panel. And what Scenes lets you do is basically save sort of a you can save your camera angle and what was hidden and shown at a given point and then go back to it. So for example, right now, I want to save this as one view, right? This is the front of our cabinet, the overview with the two overview dimensions. So I'm going to add a new scene. And you may see a message here, something about styles. We haven't, you haven't saved your style. There's an option that says, don't worry about this again. Just click that and save, tell it to save it so it'll stop asking about that. We'll call this overview. And you see we get this little button up here. We're going to see what that does in a moment here. So let's switch. Now I lost my toolbar here, so we'll have to come out to get our views back. And we're going to go to the left, I believe it was. And we're going to hide, unhide that group. Oh. Hide this group. Oh, I don't know where my side dimensions went, but I can draw them. I'll just draw them right back here real quick. And we'll make a new scene. This one's going to be called Side. Now you'll see, so the reason you have these scenes is now you can quickly jump between these views. Without having to turn everything back on and off and on and off. And you'll actually probably, if you go to Model Info, by default it actually animates between these. I turn this animation off, so if you turn that off, when you click, you jump. But if you turn animation on, you'll see it'll actually animate back and forth between them, which is kind of neat. But it gets kind of annoying after a while if you just want to really quickly get your dimensions for printing. And then to get back to our overview one, we'll hide this, or we're going to hide this one. Hide this one. 
can hide our face frame, the drawer, the door, and the back. And then we're going to find our dimensions here. We're going to unhide these. And then we'll make that a new scene. We'll call it case. And now I can quickly jump between all these dimensions. So there's my side ones. I can print that. Come to the front here with the case, print that, and do the overview and print that one. And you can have as many of these as you like. And uh, there you go. So there's printing, scenes, and dimensions. Oh, and one last little thing about, or about scenes. Remember, it's only keeping the current view, like the current angle of the camera and what was turned on or off. It's not actually keeping the position of stuff in your model. So if I was to rotate around here, let's say, and I wanted to move the face frame for whatever reason, and I move this out. Now when I switch between these scenes, the face frame is still moved. So it doesn't remember where things were, it just remembers where the camera was and what things in your outliner were hidden or shown. You can see here in this list shows you what it actually keeps track of. We haven't gone into a lot of these shadow settings, style and fog, but something to keep in mind.